So last week I was talking about how I sometimes use distortion as a training tool because I like the way that it highlights string noise and you can use it to sort of train yourself into to minimizing that string noise. So I thought this week I'd give you a worked example which is based around um, the extended pentatonic patterns, you know, these shapes. And just sort of break that down and show you how I, I go about managing my string control. So let's zoom in, we'll have a go. So I'm just gonna work in C sharp minor. So I'm up on the ninth fret and I'm gonna play the extended pentatonic pattern. So I've got three notes on the E string, one on the B, three notes on the G. And you can keep going, alternating one and three until the bass string. Now I've covered the shape in previous videos, so I'll just put a link in the, uh, in the video here. If you wanna go and explore it, just chase that link down. Um, but what I want to do is just focus on the first four notes to start with and just look at how I'm going to control the strings. And you do this irrespective of whether you use a pick or whether you do finger style. The, the techniques to dampen the strings are going to be different, but the approach is the same. So for example, with this one, when I set up to play the first four notes, my thumb of my right hand is actually on the bottom four strings. So it's stopping those from vibrating. And similarly, when I play that first note, I'm playing it with a rest stroke on my right hand, so my first or second finger actually falls onto the B string. So five of the six strings now are, are dampened by my right hand, and the only string that can ring is the E string and I just slur the first three notes. And then when I play the B string with, with the, my index or middle finger, the third finger on my left hand is a little bit flat and that's actually dampening the E string. So now the only string that can vibrate is the B string. So that gives me good control of all of the strings and the only string that isn't being dampened is the one that we want to make a sound out of. So then you move on to the next four notes. And this is quite a bit harder because it's actually across three strings. So you're playing two notes on the E string, one on the B and one on the G string. Now, how I approach this is, again, my thumb's controlling the bottom four strings. I play a rest stroke on the E. And uh, because it's a rest stroke, it drops on the B and that stops the B string from vibrating. Then the B, I can just rake through and play that B and just like before, my third finger's flat, so that controls the E. And then I rake through a great gain for the final note on the G string using my little finger to fret it and again my little finger is flat so that deadens the B string. So that first part is reasonably straightforward for me to play. The big challenge actually is the reset to that E note again because suddenly my little finger comes up and that releases the G string and could well cause it to vibrate especially as I'm reaching up for that E again. So what I do actually with my thumb, it's a very small movement, but my thumb on my right hand just moves across as my little finger releases the note and touches the G string again. And that's what allows me to control that shape. The next shape is similarly difficult. It starts on the C sharp. And I'm doing a similar thing with my thumb again when I reset from that low F sharp to the C sharp. My thumb just moves off the G string to play those last two notes and then moves back on again to deaden them when I, when I set up for that C, C sharp. And then the final four notes are actually a lot easier to play. So in this case, I play the first note again as a rest stroke, 
and that deadens the G string and then the fact my little finger just coming across to play that G sharp note deadens the B string. And then you find that whole pattern resets again when you get when you move on to the lower part of the shape. So actually if you build the rules that build the motor skills to control the first of all groups of notes, then you can use that all the way across the shape. So as you can see, some of these shapes are much harder to, to control than others, but it's definitely worth persevering because the shape, this extended pentatonic pattern, has a whole load of potential, a whole load of directions that you can take it that the standard pentatonic shapes just don't let you do. So I, I think it's well worth spending the time getting it under your fingers, figuring out how you're going to control the strings when you play these shapes. Anyway, that's it this week. Hopefully that was useful for you and we'll chat next time. Goodbye.